Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. Justin is not here because he's fulfilling his lifelong dream of visiting every metropolitan sewer system. So he's off doing that right now, checking another one off the list. So in his place is the kindest, the coolest, the gunchiest Noah Reno back on the podcast. Back leaving the sewers for the first time in quite a while. Oh, so you are also in the sewers. That's nice. Yes, well, I I rarely ever come out. That's where I dwell. <laughs> so this is a big deal, getting you out of the sewers. Big, yeah, yeah, it's uh, so m- mucky and, but you know, sometimes you just got to act like a goblin all <laughs> oh, the yeah. time as a oh, profession, as a job. As a job, you got to be the goblin. So, well, to kick off the show, we always start the show with a question. So, Noah, the question is: What food do you think would represent each U.S. state? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm seeing where the concern there is. Uh, okay, let's go down the list. Uh, <laughs> let's start with alphabetical. We don't have to do all of them. But Hold on. <laughs> Okay, we'll do this uh this first line. California. Okay. I'm thinking avocado toast. Ah. Texas, I'm thinking barbecue toast. Ah. Florida uh, I'm thinking Ron DeSantis toast. Hey, there we go. Alaska. Ooh, I don't think they have bread up there. So I'm going to go with, uh, breadless toast, Hawaii, Hawaiian bread toast, Ooh. Virginia beans on toast, colonial mm. Ohio. Um, they don't deserve toast. Georgia. <laughs> Ohio's is have- astronaut <laughs> toast because everyone- Georgia. <laughs> Georgia is going to have Russian toast. Arizona <laughs> is going to have Havelina toast. Okay. Massachusetts is going to have uh, New York style pizza toast. I know, it's, I, know, I know it's not New York City. I know that's not where that is, but uh, Pennsylvania. Um, God, they're going to have land toast. Uh, Washington, D.C. This is, oh, is it Washington? That is Washington State. Okay, Washington State can have wet toast. Wet toast, baby. New Jersey can have Polly Shore. Colorado can have, ooh, what is a Colorado food dish? Bear I'm, toast. Bear toast? That's That checks out. North Carolina, uh, they can have uh, crab toast. New mm. York, New York City proper, uh, state proper. They, Rat toast. They can probably have uh, Long Island iced tea. <laughs> you know, get it? Uh, Mich- Michigan can have uh, freshwater taffy toast. The only Ooh. place in the world that has it, I think. I think that's mm. true. Uh, and finally, Illinois can have uh, <laughs> just like 16 pieces of toast stacked on top of each other. Uh, and then also like doused in uh, more topping and sauce and cheese and shit than yeah. anybody can ever uh, and some Italian beef <laughs> properly yeah. eat. Right. Um, and we'll just call it deep dish toast. There we go. Deep dish toast. I love it. It's very well done. I'm trying to think of what Missouri would be. Um, I don't know. A racist toast. I mean, um, I think having too many electoral college votes toast. <laughs> For the population per capita. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I love how there's, uh, they, they're like, have you ever had St. Louis style pizza? And I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. That, that's a thing? They're like, yeah, man. I'm like, okay. I think uh, I think Justin and I covered this before. Uh, style pizza. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, it's like thin crust. Um, the style is a cracker-like crust made without yeast. Generally used Prevel cheese and is cut into squares or rectangles instead of wedges. So it's like so. I mean, I like a thin crust pizza, but you don't have to call it St. Louis style pizza. I was like, all right, thin crust pizza. Since when? How how old is this this uh, creation? You know what I mean? Like, I th- I thought it, you were gonna say it's like um it's like an arch pizza. <laughs> It's like shaped, shaped like an arch. It's got to be. It is, I think it came to pass in like the 2000s. Or so. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, the cheese is developed by the St. Louis firm Costa Gro- Grocery in the 1950s. Nobody cares. Yeah, it's all Wisconsin adjacent. Yeah. 
yeah, it's yeah, no big deal. Whatever. I don't know. I, I'm okay with a thin crust pizza. It's not my go-to. Um, it should be, but I love a, I love a hand toss. I mean, I, I, I'm always a deep dish guy. Like, not necessarily Chicago deep dish. Like, pan pizza is kind of really what I'm going for. You know, like, I like a good oily like, crust. I like a Detroit style, but that's I love I'm a gonna, Detroit I'm going to stop it there. I don't think mm-hmm. it needs to be any thicker than that. That's fair. That's totally fair. Like, I love, I uh, for my birthday, congratulations, Doug, you're 41. Uh, I was just like, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, I want Jets pizza. I love Jets pizza. That's it's so Detroit style up. pizza. It's so good. And uh, <laughs> I got me a nice rectangle uh, pizza from Jets. And I was like, yes. So when good. I was when I was growing up, we would I think it was like every other Sunday we would do pizza night at, mm-hmm. at home, which was like a reprieve for my mom having mm-hmm. to feed uh, <laughs> seven people. Um <laughs> And we were always so excited for pizza night. And then our town got a Jets. And that Uh became uh, one of a particular person's in the family's favorite. Uh, And it and I no longer became I was no longer excited for pizza nights anymore. I I knew that it was going to be the Jets pizza square. Uh, I didn't care for it. Yeah, no, I I get that. Like (laughs) Jill isn't super into it. And I think I, I requested it one too many times. We haven't had it in like years at this point in time and uh when i did it she's like okay this can come back in the rotation now i'm like it's served its sentence you know it's served (laughs) it's time away um and i'm like okay fair enough like we can we can do that so um but yeah i was very i was very pleased to uh uh to have it again it was delicious it hit the spot i didn't overeat which is always my fear we got just the right they also have Decent chicken wings there too, which I was very pleased with. Sure. So I can take it was the solid. wings. Yeah, it was very very solid. I love so, wings. Um, but yeah, I, I I love a Detroit style pizza. I love I love that that that's a good pan crust that I can always yeah. get down with, man. Get your yeah. little crispy on your top, and it's like just hot, nice hard on the bottom. Yeah. That goldy Crunch. buttery. Yeah, caramelized, you know, on the sides, and then I, I can, you know, what you don't need to do like the strips of sauce. I'm like, whatever. I like the strips of sauce. Just put sauce like, on like if, normal. If you you're know? if I'm making it myself. I'm going to mm-hmm. do the strips of sauce because I'm splurging for that extra quality of the cheese. Mm-hmm. Not every bite needs to have the sauce on it, in my personal opinion. Okay. Because right. you're getting enough flavor without it. It's like there's a little bit here and there. I've done – people – I've seen do like two like long ways, but I tend to do like four or five on the width rather. Okay. Like short, like the short ones. Oh, the that's short actually that's – a, that's a better way to do it, I think. I just – I listen, I love a sauce. Um, but sauce. it's like, it's tough when I do it. Cause then you get like a big bite of sauce. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'd prefer it more evenly distributed. If it's you a know? good sauce. I'm like, most of the time, if I'm ordering out and getting pizza, I'm, I'm like getting the sauce, the free sauce that comes with it mm-hmm. and I'm dipping it in there anyway. But like, cause a lot of fast food places, <laughs> their sauce is like one of the only good things that a lot of them have going for them yeah, anyway. It's so true. So it's like, I'm kind of like, this is, this is really just like a breadstick. Yeah. So I'm gonna dip the, this breadstick with cheese on it in sauce. Oh, it's so true, man. Like when, especially you get to the crust. You know, like this yeah. crust is just like so whatever. <laughs> like that's that's why when, when I when I make pizza, like I try to t- I take good. Pr- I, I usually use a focaccia dough to make it. So and then I do garlic butter spread on the crust. So when Natalie doesn't eat it, I just I shame her. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? There's been there's been a lot of uh, mastering the art of pizza within the Mind Gap community, and I gotta yes. say, I, I respect the hell out of every, every one of us who do it. I love, and if you haven't already, you should check out the link in the description for our Discord. We have a recipes channel where we share our shit, and man, it is inspiring to say the least. Where someone's like, "Hey, check out what I made," I'm like, "Oh my god, look at that!" Seth and his uh, bread scapades. I mean, because of Seth, I've gotten into. <laughs> I feel oh, like yeah. I've I've used his recipe. I've mastered the focaccia, you know, to a, to a good place. I've tried all these other focaccia recipes, enjoyed mm-hmm. the hell out of them. They're so good, and uh, I love seeing what people are making and what they're up to. It always makes me so happy. So check that shit out, y'all. You heard it check here it first. Yeah, check it out. Check out the link for other things like links to Patreon and links to our you know Redbubble. And if you're here. And you like what you're seeing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, let and leave a comment to let YouTube know that, you know, you like us and that other people should find us as well. We appreciate you. You know, check out our page, youtube.com slash podcast, where you can see this videos are uploaded there along with shorts and other clips. And I also stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central 
last Friday I did a one on one with with my daughter in Spider Hack and I destroyed her. But uh, <laughs> she got close because we used to play to 20. And I got a realization. I'm like, that's too hard. Like she can't be that consistently good for 20 rounds. But I was like, let's reduce it to 10. And she, the last game we played, it ended up being 10 8. Like she, I was at nine for a while and she was climbing back. And it was 9 8 at one point in time. Wow. And then. I, sm- I smashed her and she got really she got she got a little teary eyed and I go, hey, listen, you did a really good job. I keep telling her, I go, listen, one of these days it's going to happen. And when it does, I'm going to celebrate you because I don't take it easy on her in that game. Like, yeah, I uh, we well, I guess I just want that first victory to mean something. You know what I mean? Oh, and and it, it'll be so sweet. I'll, I will be so excited for her when it happens. It'll be so good. And then she found stick uh, stick fight the game. Yeah. And. <laughs> she wanted to play a game the other night, and I was like, "Hey, look at this one!" I pulled it up, and she instantly fell in love with it. And we played, played through all the maps twice. <laughs> I was like, "We have to stop." And she's like, "Can we play more later?" I'm like, "We can play more later," but she just wanted nice. to keep going, and she was giggling. If you haven't <laughs> played that game, it's basically you're a stick figure, and you just try to fight each other with it's these these two D uh, physics based platform fighters. Yes, and you basically get all pro. assortment of guns, and a lot of the guns have shoot snakes. You know, and if that sounds crazy, it's because it is, you know, and it's a lot of fun. And watching her just like laugh her ass off as wild shit happens. It's it's the best thing in the world. So but we're shaping up to do some pummel party uh, this this coming Friday. So you should come check that out. APM Central. Uh, my gap crew is getting together to uh, throw bees at each other, among other Absolute things. Absolute classic. Yes. Shit gets shit gets rowdy. It gets when rowdy. The it gets party fun. Comes out. And Pumble Party is basically a violent version of Mario Party. So, and it's super duper fun. So, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a treat. So, uh, no, real quick, man. Like, what's what's been going on with you, dude? Like, what's new? <laughs> Honestly, so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of life has been <laughs> happening uh, over the last three months. Life finds um, a way. Moved out of Nashville into a new city. Got myself a new job, new house. Um, shit's crazy. Take that it's, depression. Yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, it's been crazy. I've been I've been just super busy lately. Uh, big lifestyle change. I mean, I haven't worked uh, properly. I, I've worked for myself for the last three years. So now having a full-time gig, all the benefits, having to go into the office, which is the biggest downside for sure, yeah. uh, is is just like all the stuff that I used to do when I was kind of the homemaker, uh, I don't really get to do anymore. What do you miss uh, most? Like cooking and being able to, to prep meals and stuff, because mm, I just yeah. don't get to do that anymore. Um, that having every meal of the week planned out and being able to like make stuff in advance, do stuff, do cooking the night before. If I wanted to do something more intricate for the next day, um, I just don't, I just can't do anymore because I'm at the office eight hours every day. And then I get home and I don't want to feel like I'm just doing chores all day, every day. So I like, I've just kind of slunked down into, okay, I'm going to get home from work and I'll play games for a little bit and then I'll cook dinner. And then it's like TV time. Um, whereas before I would get all of like my games and my chores and my cooking out in the first, you know, six ish Mm -hmm. hours of the time that I was awake. And then my nighttime could be dedicated to anything that I wanted to do because it was all just like taken care of already. Uh, and now it's like, I'll do one thing a day at home because that's all (laughs) that I have the stomach for. And I wake up at like five 30. So early bedtime can't be staying up too late anymore or i'm just gonna be miserable all day the next day yeah this is I started uh drinking coffee i yeah. started drinking coffee doug uh so noah uh congratulations uh this is <laughs> this is a level of adulting that you've reached it that, sucks. Uh, it's a tough pill to swallow and um it's important I was, though i was supposed to be young forever it was supposed right. to be easy it's supposed to be fun yeah uh yeah it's one here of those we things are. here we are man you're doing it you're <laughs> you're doing it you're a real boy and i'm it, it's listen it sucks you know um and i hope 
at some point you can find a work from home position because uh, going in the office, it's for it's for the birds, man. Yeah. It's for the and fucking I'm birds. I'm not I'm not too worried. I I'm I'm gonna stick this out mm-hmm. uh, for the foreseeable future, but I do have a three year plan that does include moving back closer to Nashville and potentially working for our NHL team. Oh wow! There's a there's a step by step process that happens to get there, but like the step one is already in motion so nice. like step that's one. my I, I just gotta kind of get through upload this grind, virus and then once i get to that point <laughs> upload virus step bring two down the government. demand ransom step three <laughs> part of ransom includes getting a job <laughs> <laughs> give them my social security number just because i think that they would need it and then say Step four, after ransom has been achieved, you have to hire me and you cannot uh, retaliate against me. Otherwise, that's against the law. (laughs) Yeah, actually, literally, retaliation is illegal. I'll talk to HR about it. That's right. You can't retaliate. (laughs) Well, that would be cool, man. That would be a really cool gig working with the NHL team. That would be awesome. Yeah. So where we are now is uh, is not a permanent fixture. Okay. All right. But. We'll be here for, for a little well, bit, at least. Congrats. I'm happy that, you know, yeah. you're experiencing the corporate world. I think everyone needs a dose, dose of that in their life, you know, get a little bit of that in their veins. Otherwise, are you really a red-blooded American, you know? Yeah, I've seen the American dream unfold in real time, and most of it has to do with not paying me um, enough and mm-hmm. a lot of other people who do less work than me getting paid more. This guy's, this guy's figured it out. Can I get an oo woo? All right. <laughs> All right. Before I move on, uh, we do have to take a quick ad break. All right. Here we go. This week's ad is brought to you by Hey You. Do you feel an itch? <laughs> or do you do your feet itch? Like, do you ever feel like you got just a bunch of little guys made of sharp, pointy bits always just fucking with your feet? <laughs> I know I do. And I put together just the thing. With flap cream, your unbearable mild itchiness will be treated almost soon. We can't tell you what flap stands for, but I assure you it's probably legal. Just apply them creams once or twice and make those pointy little dudes slide right off. So what are you waiting for, dumbass? Buy flap cream today and use code MINECRACK at checkout for free shipping on orders of $100 or more. Disclaimer, cream only affects little pointy guys, does not affect redness, does not soothe, does not stop itchiness. Woo! Well, uh, with Noah being back, back in the pocket here, as they say in sports terms, um, it's exciting because as of recording this, recording this on Tuesday, February 20th, uh, in two days' time, Dating the, the new... podcast. What's that? Dating the podcast. We got to date it because people have to understand the context for why we're talking about this because it comes out after the fact. The new Avatar The Last Airbender, Abadabad Airbender uh, show, the live action, is hitting Netflix on February the 22nd. James and Cameron is at it again with those James blue guys. <laughs> and we were like... You know, we were sitting there going like, man, we kind of wish it was already out because we could then like, you know, watch and talk about it. So what better? The next best thing is to talk about it without seeing it and talk about what we <laughs> think and hope it will be and what we hope it won't be. Yeah. So, so you've seen the trailers, obviously. About, <laughs> about, oh, well, what are you guys talking about? It's out. You've not seen it yet? No, we haven't seen it no, yet. No, we haven't. But we are both very big Avatar The Last Airbender fans. So much so, uh, you are a a game master for the tabletop RPG. I have have that right here. You have gone to the convention, Geocon, right, Gen Con, not Geocon. Gen Con, the Geneva Convention. The Geneva Convention to play this in hopes of improving diplomatic relations with all nations around the world. I tell you what, if there's anything that's going to solve... The humanitarian crisis in Gaza right now, it is Noah GMing an Avatar The Last Airbender uh, game. So let's go. You know, that's crazy because I think that's true. And I've thought about that. I've I've thought about that conflict and I've thought, I think we really just need to sit down and have a little Avatar adventure. Because by the end of it, you can't go through like an adventure with Iroh or like 
and like, and like come out of that feeling sour on the other end. Uh uh-uh. uh, mm-hmm. doesn't happen. You gotta Impossible. be like, hey, hey, BB, what would Kiyoshi do? Huh? What Kiyoshi? Well, do? She, listen, well, she's she's pretty aggressive, but what do you think she'd do in this situation? You know? Huh? Get it together, BB. Anyway, um, the the RPG is cool. It's super great. You should check it out. Super fun. Uh, it's super fun. And uh, I'm a huge fan of the the show, the animated. Cora is a second place, a, a solid second place for me. Um, I like what it tried to do, but as a as a whole, I didn't like it as much as uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. But it's definitely pretty solid all together. So uh, I never saw the M Night Shyamalan movie. I just couldn't get myself to do it. Um, I'd seen clips, and I was like, <laughs> "No, thank you. I'm not going to do it." Um, and I don't think I'm missing anything by doing that. So you know, I, I saw that one. It, it was, uh, it's tough because mm-hmm. I was, I was fairly young when it came out. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, Oh, I love this show already. So seeing it in live action is cool. Like mm-hmm. seeing all, all of this stuff is cool. But even then, before I had ever begun my like filmmaker journey, I was like, why was that like that? Why were there choices made in there that don't make sense or don't line up with the show? Like, I understand that you're sticking an entire season of this TV show into a movie, but like there was some weird stuff in there that didn't make any sense from like a production standpoint. Yeah. And in, and now in my adulthood, uh, that movie's dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate um, because I think it was a huge missed opportunity. But also, like you said, I, I think maybe the timing the timing just wasn't right for it, right? I yeah. think they were trying to strike while the iron – what they felt like the iron was hot for that and if they just waited. Because the idea of like, um, you know, a series wasn't popular at the time. You know, like right. a lot of these things were like, we have to make a movie. We have to make a movie series based on this. Like nowadays, because of st- streaming and how everything's thriving – uh, it's almost like you got to look at like, why are we making a movie out of this? Why shouldn't this just be a streamer? You know what I mean? Like, why shouldn't it be on there? Because you can take your time with it. So the fact that, you know, they're like, we're going to get all of book one into one two hour movie. It was insane. It's like, yeah. well, we got to cut some stuff out. I'm like, do you? Do you have to do that? <laughs> what are you thinking? Um, but, you know, this this live action one's coming. I think it's met with uh, I, I think some people are excited. I think some people are concerned and a little like. Yeah hesitant for it um i'm more in the latter a little bit um i i liked the first teaser trailer when i saw the second trailer i was a little more like Ooh, i hope so like i'm ho- I, I, i'm ho- yeah. i'm having good vibes but i'm a little concerned <laughs> i'm a little concerned I, I think from the first couple trailers we saw um i'm only excited for the look for, yes. for the way that it's being directed and like how it's how the world is is appearing to be realized mm-hmm. um i in the way the they've shown with bending and stuff I and mean, even as far back as like last year when um like a production demo was mm-hmm. released that was just like a vfx test or like a like a stunt test for earth bending mm-hmm. and i was like immediately it it looked yeah. This little grainy, like previs footage with mm-hmm. uh, these like cheap visual effects looked better than any earth bending, at least in the uh, in the film. Yeah. Uh, and and so I'm like, a couple things have caught me off um, in those trailers specifically. The some of the line deliveries. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. Which you're getting kid actors. Yeah. I get that. But at the same time, you can't have them retake a line if yeah. like so. So they at least have think that thought that that was like the right one. I I guess I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, there there were a couple instances in the trailer. Even the one the the one shot that they've milked in like every single teaser mm-hmm. is the one where Momo lands on Sokka's head. Yeah, and it's like that entire line of dialogue where he's like. You got your friends and a, me and a big ball of fur. What else could you need? I don't like that read. I don't like the way that he says that. And all yeah. I've heard, because a couple first impressions have been released from uh, from like some public audiences that got to go see the premiere and didn't uh-huh. sign an NDA or anything. I'll say that like Sokka is still like one of the best parts of this show. Nice. But I just didn't like that yeah. delivery of that line. And they've put it in every trailer. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I um, the thing I I, li- I can appreciate uh, being a father is that I can watch these shows with Natalie and she's just gonna enjoy it. Like there's, yeah. I can I can really throttle back on my critique of it because if I look at my daughter and she's enjoying it, then I'm like, this is a win. Like this is a win. Like I'm not. I, I just watched the Marvels uh, with Natalie over the weekend and. I just sat back. Now I'm like, let's watch the Marvels. Now he goes, no. I'm like, we're going to watch the Marvels. It's my fucking birthday. We're going to watch what I want to watch. <laughs> and I put it on and we had a good time. Listen, it's not a great movie by a long shot. Um, I don't think it deserved all the hate that it got. It deserves some of it. It's just it's clunky. Um, the things don't necessarily piece together that well, but it's a fun movie. It's a fun watch. I enjoyed it. And Natalie was engaged the whole time. She had a good time. Um, and I was like, this is what it's all about. Like at the end of the day, you know, um, we're here to have fun. I want to take the gerbus approach to things yeah. uh, and just be like, hey, I want to I want to be entertained. I want to enjoy this. And so I'm hoping going into this, like I'm not going to try to overthink it too much. I'm not going to try to overanalyze it too much. I just want to be like, what's it feel like to me while I'm watching it? Because that's really what it is. Um, I just rewatched a movie I'd seen. I haven't seen in years called The Saint. Are you familiar with this movie? No. It stars Val Kilmer back in his prime in uh, um, fuck Elizabeth Elizabeth Shue. And uh, I this is in the '90s, man. I remember watching this movie when I was younger. I'm like, this movie's so cool. I watched it. I'm like, this movie sucks, man. This movie, what the fuck? This is this classic '90s movie where I'm like, this doesn't really make sense. What's going on? Um, and so I, I looked at that. And I was like, this just doesn't feel right. It feels wrong. There's things that just don't make sense. And I'm like, I, I'm sitting there being like, without analyzing it, I can be, I can point to moments and be like, this feels off. And I will circle back to it at some point and try to explain it and try to articulate why it feels off. But in general, I'm like, I didn't like it. I'm hoping <laughs> when I watch this, when I watch it with Natalie, we can just sit back, watch it, and just have fun. And I can just appreciate it for what it is. And I don't have to get all butthurt or bent out of shape yeah. and join the butthurt boys, you know, and start, you know, be like, you ruined my childhood. <laughs> like, whatever. It's fine. It's a show. They're trying, well, they're the trying to do it. The, the original, the mm-hmm. cartoon, has aged incredibly well oh my god so it's, well i literally uh two nights ago we finished our rewatch and we just started watching cora um and i mean we've we've rewatched it multiple times in the mm. last couple of years but like it it's just a good show it so is good. it is it there's a reason for its acclaim and i get people wanting the live action adaptation to be good and i think it will be good but it's not going to be the cartoon. It, it, it can't be like you're not going to get the same delivery from the actors because they're acting and like they're moving as well as, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Zuko is like doing his own stunts and stuff. Uh, so like that's more of where this is going. It's going to be more of a spectacle and it's going to have more of the drama of being able to pull emotion from actors and stuff because th- it seems like that's where they're going more of this. They've said like the Game of Thrones route. Mm-hmm. which c- would concern me if I just wanted to see the cartoon adapted into live action. But yeah. I want to see this story retold. And that's what they're doing. If you want that's to a very key the point. original story, go watch the cartoon because yeah. there is no reason not to watch the cartoon. It's an incredible fucking show. Because that begs the question, why do this? If all you're going to do is recreate the cartoon then what are you doing like why why are we doing this i i we should expect some differences and we could contrast and compare what we like versus what we don't and you know i've heard everyone just like theory crafting about you know all the Sokka's not gonna be a misogynist so then yeah. where's this arc gonna be and everything's gonna be so serious and there's this gonna be i'm like i don't know man i haven't seen it yet you know yeah. so i want to give it a shot i want to see what it's gonna be about their arcs can be different their characters yeah. are still based on this source material yeah but it is a different world it's a different story uh, it's, yeah. the, it's the same beats i guess yeah but they they're they take different paths to get there. It's it's effectively different people following the same storyline. Right. Um, it's like if you run a one shot in an adventure mm-hmm. of it, like a Dungeons and Dragons with with two different groups of people, you're still going to hit most of those same 
plot points like there's there's still a story laid out right. in the dungeon that you're doing but they're going to take their own individual approach that's, a great, that's literally what it is that's a great comparison you know the, the uh, you will hit the beats but you're gonna hit the beats differently you know yeah so like i'm excited to see i'm just excited to see the bending like in live mm -hmm. action i've i've been fought this is like the filmmaker vfx uh nerd in me um like eight maybe ten years ago now this uh vfx youtube channel that just like did short films and stuff started producing their own like um vfx pack that is adaptable and it i can't i can't think of the the word off the top of my head but it's ai fluid. it's it's not ai <laughs> it's it's like uh generative and it it functions like you have your shot of your guy doing punches mm -hmm. and then you can select like, okay, he's going to be fire bending and you have the fire coming out of your hand, but you can individually tweak the points and also just like animate it along a path. And it, all the systems and stuff are already built so that it functions like it works. Oh, cool. um, and I was like, I was following that project so deep for so long. I was like, I don't care who does it. It can be a YouTube fan film. I just mm -hmm. want to see what this world would look like if yeah. it was given the right care and attention. Sure. Um, and I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they used this system for this show. Oh, cool. Because it already exists. Like the firebending specifically looks really, really good. I know it's not that difficult for a higher like end studio budget to like generate fire, <laughs> like <it's laughs> blender, mm -hmm. but like, with the water bending and mm. with the earth bending and the air bending specifically, the air bending looks almost identical in the show from what they've shown to this system. Mm -hmm. It's like, I I gotta believe if if not actually using those assets directly, some of those dudes are probably on this project. Yeah, it's like, and that's exciting to me is because that's there's cool. people who care about it working on it, and that's yeah. like, if they if they if the story differs. They told this like it in the way that they wanted to tell it. The people who are working on it care about it versus the original film where it felt like there was uh, no attention given and like nobody really gave a shit. And it was just made because Nickelodeon wanted to do it. I think that's that's a huge call out because there's been several other animes that have been converted over to live action. Right. There's One Piece. There's yeah. Cowboy Bebop. There's Death Note. There's Alita, Battle Angel. There's Alice in Borderland. Like the list yeah. goes on and on. Like in, in, in of how they do this. And I I recently watched One Piece on Netflix. I haven't seen the original show. And um, about twenty minutes into the first episode, I almost turned it off when <laughs> oh. I watched Luffy stretch beyond. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? But I was like, hang in there. And I did, and it was great. It was a great show. I loved it. And I was curious. I was like, what do People who love this, the anime, think about it, and it got very high yeah. acclaim. And it seemed, you know, I, you know, doing some research on it, it seemed like everyone who was involved with it took took it very seriously. They yeah. obviously had a passion for it. They understood the source material. The original and, creator was on board the whole time, right? And that's the thing is, this a lot of this stuff too, especially things like you know, One Piece or animes in general. Like, it's a leap, right? It, where some yeah. of that stuff can only exist. In the anime, like the fact that they're going to try and do a My Hero Academia, I'm like, guys, yeah, guys, I don't think we need to do that. Like, or you know, you've seen the um, the uh, uh, Attack on Titan they tried to do, yeah. where I'm like, guys, yeah, we, we it, don't need there's to. Like, there is, a, it's interesting when it comes to like these Western adaptations of the yeah. anime versus the Eastern adaptations yeah. of the anime, because there there's so many. Like yes. th there's there's so many like Japan exclusive live action adaptations. Right. And there is a certain level of jank in corn to them, but they're a lot more true to their source. Like they're just trying to directly adapt and like just do it. Doesn't matter how goofy it is. Yeah. Um, they're just doing it. And like there's a level of of respect I have for that. But it's when we then come and do something like the Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Which was not great. <laughs> I like, didn't watch it. I'd seen a little bit of the original. The original didn't do much for me. So like I was kind of like indifferent. So but I heard the, the, the live action yeah. was uh, was not good. I couldn't finish it. Yeah. I tried. But 
there's but there's like the there's two live action death notes like there's the 2017 yeah. one starring uh nat wolf mm-hmm. and there and uh willem dafoe mm-hmm. which like pretty decent casting actually but like yeah. just didn't play didn't, out it, but it then just, there's like yeah. an older one that was developed in japan that i have not seen but has like i heard it was excellent is is fairly well acclaimed at least yeah. among fans um so it's like, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it's just a matter of are we doing this because it's popular? Or are we doing it because we want to do it? Yeah. What's the what's the what's what's the point? Right. Because, again, yeah. if we're just trying to recreate the animated you know, series, then what's what, what are we trying to achieve by doing it? Right. It's like I get upset when I, I hear a band cover a song. Right. And they don't put their own spin on it. And it sounds exactly like the original. Yeah. I'm like, why the fuck am I listening to this? Like, I want to hear your take on this song uh there's a a whole a whole um tribute to blink 182 album that came out by on pacific yeah. Radio records where all of the proceeds go to cancer research so go check that out on spotify um but there's a whole bunch of bands it's like 20 songs it's crazy all of them are covering all these blink 182 songs and i love it because i get to hear these bands and you can hear what their style really is as they're applying it to a blink 182 yeah. song and i fucking love it i'm like oh we're throwing in some like metal into this this is great we're throwing in some synth into this okay we're and they're they're taking their own spin on it and so that's why when it comes to this stuff like when i watch something like i don't mind them taking like same thing with sandman when sandman got adapted i was like Mm -hmm. yeah they did some things that were different from the source material i didn't mind it because they were taking their own approach i'm like it didn't bother me but then when you watch like watchmen and you watch how they made some adjustments because like, well, it didn't test well with audiences. I was like, well, fuck those audiences or how they take, you know, someone like Rorschach. And I bitched about this before. I'm going to do it again in the comic, in the, in the graphic novel, Rorschach, the, the, he flashes back to when he kills his first criminal and he finds out this guy who's basically been abducting children and like killing them and feeding them to his dogs. And Rorschach basically beats this guy up. He chains him to a pipe in the house and he lights the house on fire and throws him a cleaver and says you can either burn to death or you can chop your arm off and try to leave either way you're gonna die you just get to decide how to do it and it's like fucked up you're like holy shit like Rorschach but that's how his character Rorschach was was born in the movie same thing happens Rorschach discovers this guy's been like kidnapping these kids and fitting into his dogs and in a fit of rage he kills the guy with a hatchet and I'm like why did you make that choice like the whole point yeah. about Rorschach is that he is very like morally black and white. You either did something wrong or you did something right. And either way, he's going to make you pay for it, but he doesn't lose his cool. And like, it was such a weird choice to be like, he got so angry. He killed this guy. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. And so I got really hung up on that. And so I, I, there's, there's some things with that. So I, I'll be curious when we see this with Last Ember, if they're going to take choices, I'm like, well, actually, yeah. I kind of like that, you know, or like the boys, the boys adaptation. Mm-hmm. The, very different from the comics. I don't have a problem with it at all. I'm like, I like where they're going with it. I'm like, give me more. Show me more of your basing it on this source material and telling your own story. I'm here for it. Let's do see, it. I think I think the maybe one of the best instances of of like a book to, to screen adaptation is like Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. And that oh, show is dude. absolutely fantastic. Way and better than the source all material. All seasons are... And like, and the source the source material, material is so limited. Yeah. And there's three books and all of them are pretty standard. Yeah. And so they were just like, let's just do whatever we want with this following this, this like main plot. And now they're going into a season four where they have full creative freedom. And I think, I think that this show is going to be like perfect. Yeah, like, I think it's from from beginning to end. I think all seasons have had their highs and lows, mm-hmm. but all in all have been like really solid across the board. And like, I think they're going to nail it with season four, too. Yeah, I, I um, remember watching season one and then going and immediately getting the comics and being like, whoa, this is so <laughs> thin compared yeah. to the show. It moves so fast. I was like, <laughs> what? Like, this is the show's way better, you know, which <laughs> is interesting how that that's works. That's why I. That's yeah, I am. Just, I'm just still of that mindset of this is just this is just a an expansion of the thing. It's, it doesn't mm-hmm. become the right. thing. It doesn't affect the original thing right. at all. It is. At the end of the day, if it's a bad show, I'm going to be pissed that they made me sit down and watch a bad show. And right. yes, they made me because yes. 
I because I have such a passion for this franchise that I'm not going to miss something uh, right. like this. But even if it is okay, we still get to see like okay, that's what uh, that's what Ang looks like at the end when he's the big koi like. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. spirit or whatever or right. there's the here, here's what like co the face stealer looks like Ooh, realizing right. live action. Yeah. and like those are the kinds of moments that at least i can imagine it sure but i'm excited to see what those things look like and what what artistic freedoms uh yeah. are granted to those individual moments and uh if everything else sucks then you know at least at least i got some eye candy for a little bit i think my, that's my, a really good perspective on it like what what what's the the original will always exist we yeah. can always watch it. We can always enjoy it. You know, what are the goods and where the bad? And I'm with you. Like, hey, if the show sucks, it sucks, right? Like, <laughs> it is what it is. And maybe we can learn from it. I don't think it's an absolute where it's like, we should never make an anime yeah. ever again. It's like, well, guess what? They're going to try. All right. And I and listen, I'm always going to be hesitant because that ad adaptation is tricky. It's very difficult yeah. because there's some things that I think work extremely well in anime form that I don't think carry over. For example... If you were to say pick an anime that you'd love to see get made to live a adaptation, you know what I mean? Like, I would love to see Demon Hunter. But you know what? Mm -hmm. The beauty of Demon Hunter is the animation and yeah. how when they use their abilities, it's, it's it's absolutely amazing. It's so incredible. I don't think you could replicate that experience in live action, although I'd be down to see people try. Yeah. I'd be down to see that see that happen. Do you have a show yeah. you'd like to see get made in the live action? <laughs> My first thought when you said that was Food Wars. <laughs> um, I don't think it would work. Yeah. Because um, the idea that you could... Because anime makes food look really good. Oh, it sure does. And I don't think that there is a way <laughs> that you could translate good-looking food into live action that would justify women's clothes being blown off and, like, having them orgasm. Disagree. I think I we should try. I think we should try, though. I do think yeah. that we should try. I don't know if it would work out. But I think we should at least give it a try. Oh, 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I think another one would be like that I think could be actually an easy adaptation that doesn't require like a whole lot of uh, lift is it, Sword Art Online. That shows okay. But if you're looking for the sake of like adaptability, you could easily adapt. Yeah. Hey, we're in a video game world. Like, I think it's easy to do something along those lines. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, I think it's very, they, they did um, it basically in Ready Player I One. So, they, I mean, I think they did that in 2004. Four, but it would but it was under a different name oh yeah uh, oh uh shark boy and lava girl <laughs> i think is what is what the sword oh, art you know what you're right that's exactly what it was look spike there. it's spike it's three game over <laughs> is is effectively what a sword art <laughs> live yeah. action would be and yeah. i don't and i don't think it needs to be anything other than that yeah i think it would it would ha it, it would be so funny if it was like janky yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's one of those things where, you know, you always have to ask why. What's what's the point of doing this? Is it worth it? You know, to are, are we going to add anything to it? Like yeah. as much as the Death Note, the most recent Death Note movie was forgettable. Like I remember watching it. I can't remember much about it. I remember being like, eh, it wasn't as good as it, it probably should have been. I appreciate the attempt. They, they put it, you yeah. know, they were trying something on it and it didn't work. Um I, I don't think I'm ever going to give anyone shit for trying something as long as it's made in earnest, you know, as long as someone's not trying to do a cash grab, yeah. as long as someone's not like, let's milk some money out of this. You know, if you're giving it a fair shot and it just doesn't work out, hey, man, you created something. I haven't created anything like that. So <laughs> good on you for giving it a shot. But yeah. I, I appreciate a good creative spin on something. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to see from me too from from this adaptation i so. and i want i want it to do well i yeah. i want it to do well because i want to see book two and book three and like that would be cool like that would be excellent like it would be great to get the entire series you know because we never had that we've never seen Toph adapted yeah, or we've never seen what that would look like in live action so like that's what i'm hope that is my biggest hope i also would i mean imagine if this did well and we got a cora adaptation you know what i mean that would be pretty Janet Varney could probably no, she couldn't probably <laughs> she probably couldn't play Cora. Well, also action, that's something but. too is like I just think um, you know as far as um, what's the word I'm thinking of um, uh, representation, you know, of 
you know, because I, I know that was a big problem with the yeah. M. Night Shyamalan one, too. It's yes, like for sure. <laughs> Not cool. Um, I find that a lot where it's like when people like you know, the Japanese like live ad- adaptations are like, how come they're not white like they are in the show? And it's like, guys, they're not don't, white in the show. They're not. They're not actually white. Like, don't don't do that. Like, they, they don't look like that. It's like, it's like don't, do that. <laughs> don't do that, man. Like, that's you, you're you're confused. You don't do that. Like, it's not cool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I like I really like who they have at least like picked for actor. I think visually they look I think they look pretty damn close, you know. To yeah, I, I think I think show. everybody looks good. Um, I yeah, I, I think my my genuine biggest concern is that because I think that they're all fully capable and I think that it's going to be fine. It's going to look good. It's going to be whatever. But I feel the same way about the Percy Jackson series that just came out. Okay. Love the Percy Jackson series is a book series. I think all the casting is really good. I thought that they visually brought the story and the characters to life really, really well. World building, it's all there. Uh, even all the performances are pretty great. Mm-hmm. But it feels like a compilation of the series, of the of the biggest highlights of mm. the of the story laid out in a line, and the connections between those lines are not really there. And I think that they are addressing that. Okay. In that they don't, they've said that they're not going to have Aang get distracted and go off and do like the koi fish surfing and like right. go off on crazy adventures. Well, that makes and perfect people, sense. People see that as oh, but that's his whole thing is he wants to like avoid the conflict and he doesn't. He doesn't want to be the avatar. He just wants to be a kid and have fun. Like I get that, and I think that he can still have that as a character. But do we really just want to hop from place to place to place to place to place because we're not going to have? a week or two weeks in between each to like yeah. put in our minds. Oh, they're traveling from place to place. We're going to get all this all at once. And yeah. if they're here and then in the next scene, they're here and a bunch of shit has happened. It's just going to feel like, like, like we're watching a montage of the greatest hits of the show adapted into live action, yeah. not actually watching a full series play out from start to finish. That's fair. Cause you got to make cuts somewhere, right? Yeah, like you true. can't, you can't, I mean, that first season is how many episodes? Like, Well, so that's interesting. Is is actually, so season one of the new is going to be eight episodes. Uh-huh. Season one of the original was 20 episodes. Yeah. But between an hour long length per episode and 20 minutes per episode, you have mm. a lot of similarities in, mm. in that final in total time. Run time? Yeah. But they've already shown that like the first episode is going to be mostly like the eradication of the air nomads that's mm. like not something we haven't seen as the viewers before oh, that's cool so they are going to be doing new things and and cutting other things which is going to be interesting to see what they cut and what they what they change or what they keep but uh i think people underestimate their the ability to tell the story in eight episodes is such a short amount of episodes but we are getting much more time with Mm. them interesting and you know a lot of that time is not going to be dedicated to like gags and stuff like there were in the show right like there a lot of the a lot of the show is is gags or like rest because it was made for kids moments and like the animation and stuff which you don't have you just have actors like you just have these these natural movements of people interacting with each other yeah um, i hope the one thing they so don't yeah. cut is ang expressing uh the the air bison's like anal glands i'm hoping that stays in because that's an yes. important part well it's necessary and i think that's good to teach kids that like this is something you need to get done for your pets yeah. if it builds up it's unhealthy yeah. um so and honestly i am i'm curious to see what appa's rectum is going to look like on right. the live on the big screen Right. Is he going to have two anuses? Because I hope so. That's that anatomically cool. correct for, you know, I think that flying would be bison. anatomically correct. All right. They have eight stomachs. You have to have at least two buttholes, one for in and for out. That's right. That's how it goes. All right. That's how they reproduce. Well, on that note, I think this is a great way to transition into our game for this week, which I'm super excited about. So Noah is a a big gamer, I think, is to, to say it, put it lightly. I think yeah, it's a I'm a way. bit of a gamer. He's a bit of a gamer, and I'm super excited about this because similar to what Justin did to me, which was, is it AI or LinkedIn Influencer? We're going to play a game called, is it AI or is it a video game? And what I put together here is I've got four examples here. I've got four things, four entries, all right? 
And what Noah's going to have to decide is, is this an actual game? It's going to, he's going to, you're going to listen. It's an AI voice that's going to read this to you. It's going to tell and you're going to see, oh. is what's being described an actual synopsis of a game or is it a fake game created by AI? So okay. before we get started, Noah, do you have a guess at how many you're going to get right? Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to get all of them right. Okay, I like this. This is bold. This is a bold, bold prediction. I like. I like. I dedicated we're doing here. too much of my life to this, uh, to not. But although I've been off Twitter lately, I, I've mm-hmm. kind of distanced myself from social media since it is my job now. Yeah. Um. So I'm out of the loop. So if there's anything on here that's like newer, I might. I might be out. So I will but say. We'll see. For anything that is real, I have adjusted the synopsis slightly as to not yeah. give it away entirely so i may have omitted a couple of words that's here or there so you're not like you know valid as the spartan lands on halo <laughs> <laughs> you know like you're like ah good guess as, what doug i know what it as is sora does the kingdom hearts yeah as you fight <laughs> dr castlevania uh you know or whatever it goes so as tracer took her clothes off <laughs> oh wait let's hold overwatch. on oh boy oh, oh for... <laughs> all right so here we go First one. Uh, Here it is. The British have entered your waters, and now it's time to take what's yours. Assume the role of a fierce pirate, leading a crew on daring raids to plunder British ships and reclaim stolen gold for the oppressed. Navigate treacherous seas, engage in epic naval battles, and outwit formidable foes in this high seas escapade filled with action, intrigue, and the pursuit of untold riches. Uncover hidden treasures, assemble your crew, and become the most notorious pirate of the Caribbean. <laughs> All right, Noah. Is this AI? Be... <laughs> or is this a real video game? And that's got to be... Okay, I'm not going to do my guess first. I say, I'll say it's real. Walk me through it. Walk me through it. I'll say it's it. real. You're going to say it's real. I think it's real. There's enough pirate games out there. Lego Pirates of the Caribbean is the first thing that comes to mind, uh, especially because he said that. Uh, but no, there's a lot of pirate, <laughs> a lot of pirate games out that. there. I love it. Um, there's a lot of pirate games out there, one of which just came out, and uh, the others of which have existed for a while, but sound uh, vaguely similar to that. Description. Okay. So you're saying it's real. I'm saying it's real. All right. This comes from the game Golden Plunder: Rise of the Buccaneer. It's I would AI. Not have, I would not have guessed that. It's AI. It's not a real game. <laughs> Interesting. So <laughs> I'm. So I've never heard of that one. Yeah, because it's not real. Uh, no. Yeah. So I'm thinking that it's AI. <laughs> <laughs> nice attempt. I like that. Very good. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, what did you think? What, I mean, what was? I think that's it, literally. I think that is literally the plot of Assassin's Creed Four, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? From the prompt, all I said was, uh, I said, uh, assume you're a video game marketer. Write me three sentences <laughs> about a third person action game, and this is what it came up with. And I was like, sounds, oh, that sounds exactly like Pirates of the Caribbean or uh, yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll give it to you. It's fine. That's awesome. I was like, there was a chance that some of that stuff would be crossover. But, you know, anyway, anyway. all right, here's here's number two. Here we go. Here we go. Earth, fire, water, wind. The light that once shone within the four crystals was lost. Darkness covered the land until the only hope for humanity rested in legends past. Become the warriors of light and embark on your own journey to restore power to the crystals and save the world. All right, Noah, is it AI or is it a real video game? I think this is a real video game. Okay. What makes you say? Walk me through it. Okay. So um, I'm getting Square Enix vibes. Okay. I'm getting uh, JRPG. Okay. Hearing uh, Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Topical. Um, but it's like the crystals fight for light. I think that is just vague enough to be created by um, anybody who wrote the plot for a JRPG of the last 30 years. <laughs> Noah? You're right. That is a synopsis for the very first Final Fantasy game. 
Well sounds, done. Sounds about right. I was thinking Final Fantasy. I was also yeah. thinking the Mana series, but mm. I was thinking Final Fantasy. I thought it was very like when I, I found this, it was like, oh, Earth, Fire, Water, Wind. It's perfect. It's perfect <laughs> for what we're doing. So excellent job. All right. You're one and one. Here we go. Number three. Your goal is simple. Try and survive fights to the death. This fast-paced couch co-op brawler where friends battle it out in a deadly dance of chaos. Choose to take on waves of ferocious enemies as a lone wolf, or join forces with your friends, then challenge them to a duel afterwards so you can gleefully watch them do a neat trick before they launch themselves face first into the lava. Okay, that should say lava. I don't know why it doesn't know how to pronounce <laughs> into the lava. lava. Into the lava. All right, Noah, is this AI? Or is this a real video game? This one's tough. Because I can't think of any game where you work together with, or not any game, but I can't think of a game that is ba that is like being described in this way where you are playing with people and then turn against them. Mm -hmm. Or or like you do a duel. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, cause at first I was thinking, like, okay, this, could this could be like a stick fight? And I was thinking, it could be maybe like a Left for Dead, but maybe mm -hmm. like I'm gonna go with AI on this one. Okay, you're going with AI. All right, he says it's AI. <laughs> this is the synopsis for Spider Heck. <laughs> because there is a mode where you can oh, work is... together to fight against the computer. Uh, you can I'm still kill ready. each other. It's I friendly fire, but you can you can fight each other in that as well. Okay, I yeah. didn't I didn't know. I, I guess I knew that there was a swarm mode in Spider Hack, but I never played it. Yeah, yeah. So All right, next one's gonna be AI for sure. Uh, you don't know. You don't know. Did I do two and two? Did I do yes. one and three? Yes. Did I do all as one? Oh, You're a two and one. two kind of guy. Uh, you know what? Go fuck yourself. You are invited to an epic showdown where ferocious animals battle for supremacy and control of the cosmos. Choose your champion from a diverse roster of beasts, such as bears, sloths, and crabs, each with unique fighting styles and special abilities, and engage in thrilling one-on-one -on -one combat to determine the ultimate ruler of the universe. Noah, is this AI? <laughs> or is this a real video game? <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> it's so ridiculous that... It couldn't possibly be one or the other. <laughs> it's a third option. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> okay, you're telling me that there's a game that you could be a crab, a bear, or a sloth, and you fight for rule over there's the a cosmos. diverse roster there's of diverse beasts, roster including of beasts, those three. Including those things. And I don't know about it. Is it upcoming? Is it a twenty twenty four release? I don't know because you can play as a bear in Tekken famously. Correct. So I'm going to go with AI. You're going to go with AI? This is from the, the AI game Clash of Claws Reign of the Animal Lords. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way, yeah. let's fucking make this game, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on! One beast to rule the cosmos? That sounds dope! It, does sound, it sounds cool as hell. And I <laughs> have never heard of it, so it had to be fake. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, you went two and two, man. That's a solid. That was a solid well done. Like, I loved your solid. reasoning for it. As as an expert as you are in the, the game realm, I loved your ability to kind of break this stuff down and find <laughs> out what was what. You didn't go perfect, but you have solid logic in there. I like it. it no, good. I got... I, I was tricked. You were. Listen, it was entrapment, and you'll be hearing from my lawyers. Uh, but I got to go down to the sewers to get them. Yep, go to the They're sewers. They're rats. My, my lawyers are rats. <laughs> Let's swarm together to form rat lawyer, <laughs> who's also in Clash of Claws: Reign of the Animal Lords. Oddly He's enough, DLC, he's, though. He's he DLC. is DLC. He's not available. You got to pay extra to get Rat Lord Lawyer. That's the only way that's going to work. But. Noah, thanks so much for playing that game. I had a blast putting that together. I hope you had fun doing it because the answer is yes. You're welcome. So much fun. <laughs> so much All right. Fun. We're going to wrap things up. Uh, Noah, uh, what do you have to recommend? Is there anything you have to recommend? Uh, well, we've been talking about anime um, live action adaptations this whole time. So I have to put in what is maybe the 
oh, do I joke or do I be serious? <laughs> the worst anime adaptation of all time, all right. which is Dragon Ball Evolution. Uh, in my opinion, worse than the Avatar uh, movie. Uh, really, really bad. Bit of a stinker. I'd say watch it before you watch any other Dragon Ball content and then go watch Dragon Ball because you're going to be like, oh, wow. <laughs> It was tough for those any sort of adaptation in that time frame. There was definitely a yeah. window of time where they're like, "We're gonna try and do this." It's like, nope, not yet. The late, the late O zeros were. I say the late nineties through like the late aughts. They were they were Aughts. tough times, you know. O's. Until until uh, until Dark Knight trilogy and Iron Man came around. Mm -hmm. It was it was mm -hmm. tough going for a lot of properties, which didn't get a fair shake. Spawn being. Chief among those, in my opinion, Spawn is an incredible story, and boy, was that just bent over a barrel terribly. So bad. But. No, I'm going to give a real one, though, actually. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got to recommend two of my favorite movies of 2023. All right, let's do uh, it. Both Japanese cinema. Okay. Uh, the Boy and the Heron by Studio Ghibli. I really want to see that. Godzilla Minus One. Okay. Both my, oh, a third is okay. Suzume. All okay. Japanese cinema, all like my top three movies of last year, and I, I don't know if I could pick uh, which one is my favorite, but like all those movies are fantastic. If you get an opportunity to see them, uh, do so. I really want to see The Boy in the Heron. That looks really, it's really, really cool. good. So I'll have to check that out. Uh, once again, I don't have a recommendation this week. Uh, I don't have anything. I don't think I've been rewatching some films. and I, I watched The Saint. I don't really recommend that one. <laughs> um, woof. What a movie! Uh, trying to start Val Kilmer in a spy franchise did not uh, did not work. Um, uh, I think I may have recommended this before, but Galaxy Quest, fun movie with Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver and uh, uh, a whole bunch of other people. Uh, 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 Alan Rickman, um, uh, the guy who plays a Monk, uh, a whole whole sweet cast of folks uh, who basically they are. Star Trek esque actors in this Star Trek esque show, and it turns out that there are real aliens, and they end up going on a, a, a replica of the ship in space. It's fun. It's a fun movie. It's silly. It's 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 good. It's enjoyable. It's fun. I guess I'll recommend that if I haven't haven't done that. So already. fun. So, so good. Such good stuff. No, where can people find you? Holy moly! Well, like I said, I've been uh, I've been taking a break from social media, but uh, I have still been sometimes streaming on Twitch at uh at noah reno at twitch.tv i've also been uh working on some music that i've lately been teasing on my tiktok yeah, i want to hear more at, of it at noah reno on tiktok well i can maybe send you a little demo i love show. it because I, I love what you posted <laughs> on there it, hit, it, it tickled my fancy so uh keep an eye out for that stuff it's been a music heavy it's a good hobby when you have a full-time job yep yes sir Nice. Very cool. Uh, you can obviously find MindGap. All social media is at MindGap Podcast. Check our description for links to our Discord. Be part of the family. Uh, check links to our merch at Redbubble. Check links to our Patreon. And just check out YouTube.com slash MindGap Podcast for all of our videos, all of our shorts, all that good stuff for the video game live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. We'd love to see you there. Hang out with us. If you're listening to us, wherever you are, you know, like, rate, review, same thing on YouTube. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing from you. What what animes do you think after this? Do you think it's going to be good? Uh, what's 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 an anime you'd like to see get made in live action? What's one that shouldn't have been made? Let us know in the comments. Did you also guess were those AI or video games? Which ones did you get right? Don't fucking lie because we'll know. We don't like liars in the comments. I hate liars in the comments. I hate liars in the comments. Uh, but we appreciate you hanging out with us. So I will say, uh, Noah, thank you. Doug, thanks. Nice. And to all our listeners and viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.